Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news, and sometimes reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at the Geekom IT15 Mini PC. Let's get started. Alright, to kick things off, Geekom sent me the IT15 Mini PC for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Now, in terms of specs for a mini PC, the IT15 is uh, its pretty good. I mean, it's got an Intel Ultra 9 285H CPU. It's got 32 gigs of DDR5 memory and a 2 terabyte drive. Taking a look inside the box here, and the very first thing we can see is the Geekom IT15 Mini PC. And I'll set that aside just to see what's under it. So underneath here, we've got our power cable and power supply combo. I mean, the power cable plugs into the power supply. Interestingly here, it's the exact same power supply as what's included with the Geekom IT12, which runs a 1280p Intel i7, and it does include a barrel jack. So the included power supply pumps out 19 volts, 6.32 amps, and a maximum of 120 watts. Additionally, here is a mounting plate, and this you can use if you wanted to mount the mini PC on a wall or something like that. All you have to do is just swap out the bottom plate on the mini PC. It is metal. There are some included hardware screws as well as an HDMI cable. Now the mini PC here, the IT15 supports two HDMI outputs, but they include one cable. And underneath all of that is a nice little thank you card as well as an instruction manual. The instruction manual might be useful if you're looking for specific specs. So here's a better look at the Geekom IT15 mini PC, which I'm assuming is what you're most interested in. It is a matte black finish and yes, it's a fingerprint magnet. There is a protective plastic cover that I took off here and I don't know if I wish I did or not because this thing attracts a lot of fingerprints. But anyways, if you're not touching it, I guess there's no issue here. Taking a look at the front panel, we've got two USB ports as well as a headphone jack. And I love that everything is clearly labeled so you know exactly what it is. On the side here, we have a full-size SD port. And on the right side of this case, we've got a locking mechanism here if you wanted to, I don't know, lock this to a desk with a cable or something like that. And take a look at all of the venting. This case, although it's small, is very well ventilated. On the back here, we've got our barrel jack on the left-hand side to provide power. We've got two USB-C ports, two HDMI ports, one Ethernet jack, as well as two USB ports. And again here, I love how these ports are labeled. They're labeled with a lot of detail, so it's very easy to tell which port does what if you're looking for a specific port. For example, the USB-C port on the left-hand side is also for power delivery. And take a look at that speed of the Ethernet port, 2.5G. On the bottom of the mini PC, you'll find the screws to take the case apart, as well as some information about power delivery and the specific model number. Now the case on this one, although it's a fingerprint magnet, it is solid. It feels very high quality, it is all metal, and it feels a lot better than a lot of the other mini PCs I've ever seen. Now opening this up is simple and straightforward. There's four screws on the bottom and those screws also double as rubber feet. And here's a look inside the case and I'll say it's very easy to change out the storage drive or the RAM if you wanted to. On the bottom of the case here, there's also a spot for an SSD if you wanted to mount it there. So here's a closer look at the inside of the case in all of its glory and we'll go on ahead and take a look at the RAM first. So looking at the RAM, they went with Crucial as the brand here, and it's very easy to see that there's two 16 gig sticks here for a combined total of 32 gigs. I like that they left the labeling on here so we're not left guessing, and it's very easily swappable if you wanted. And here's the main storage drive. It's a Kingston at 2048 gigabytes. And to replace this, there's literally just one screw. I like that they went with brand names here and they kept the labeling on this so we're not left guessing as to what brand and what type of stuff they used. Now underneath all of this stuff, if you wanted to open it up even further, you can and that's where the CPU and fan and all of that stuff is. Now I would recommend probably opening this up every now and then just to clean that fan out because the fan on this device does put in work and we'll get to that in just a minute. And just for some fun here, here's the Geekom IT12 beside the Geekom IT15. The Geekom IT12 I reviewed in a previous video and it does have an i7-1280p processor in it. It's capable but not as powerful as this IT15. 
both boxes here seem to be near identical. However, one difference that I'm noticing here is that on the IT15, which is on the right hand side here, that top USB-C port has the power delivery symbol where the IT12 does not. So let's get into some testing here, which I'm assuming you're going to be interested in. Instead of putting it through some benchmarks, I'll try to do some real world testing. As a content creator, I put out a video almost every single day, sometimes multiple times in a day. And that being said, what better way to test this out than by rendering a video? And this is an actual video I'm putting out on this channel. And it is using the IT15 right now to render and the program I'm using is Shotcut. And let's compare this as well to my main PC, which is a laptop. It's an Alienware X14R1 featuring an Intel i7-12700H CPU and an NVIDIA 3060 GPU. And might as well compare it as well to the IT12 featuring that Intel i7-1280P. Now, instead of sitting through the entire time while this is rendering, I've gone on ahead and waited till the very end here. It took 10 minutes and 43 seconds to render a video. Now for comparison, I'm rendering the exact same video on a completely different PC. Here's the Alienware X14 with that Intel i7-12700H with the 3060 GPU. And it is rendering right now. Apologies for the dusty screen. It's actually, I think it's ash because I had this outside near the campfire. I probably should wipe it down. And again, skipping ahead here in the Alienware took a little bit longer. 13 minutes and 49 seconds. And next, just for fun, we've got the Geekom IT12 mini PC running the i7-1280p CPU rendering the exact same video yet again and skipping to the end of this and it took 17 minutes and 30 seconds to render so the it15 finished first the alienware x14 finished second and the it12 finished third and just for some fun here is the steam deck rendering the exact same video and skipping ahead to when it completed the rendering and it took 25 minutes and 20 seconds it did it but not the fastest now another benefit to doing that relatively non-scientific rendering test is to check out the fan noise. Normally when rendering a video, it pushes that CPU pretty hard and the fans can get pretty loud. So listen to the IT15 versus the Alienware versus the IT12 rendering the exact same video. On a quick side note here, and I want to point this out, this test is really subjective. I mean, I'm using the internal microphone on my cell phone to record it. And it may sound different depending on what headset or what speakers you're currently using. So that being said, here's the closest apples to apples comparison that I can do. So the least quiet here is the IT12, which I found to be the most surprising given the fact that it was the least powerful of all the CPUs and I was pushing it the most. Um, then it was followed up by the IT15, followed by the Alienware X14, which is one of the biggest gripes I have about that laptop, is the fan noise. I noticed that the IT15, and I don't know if you're able to pick it up in your headset or your speakers or whatever, uh, but the IT15, the fan noise was a little bit deeper and less irritating i would say than the alienware laptop however to be fair here the it15 was also very noticeable it is not a quiet little mini pc you can hear the fan especially when you're pushing it now for some gaming testing and well here is pubg up and running and realistically i've been able to keep this one above 60 frames per second pretty consistently right now i am gaming and screen recording and screen recording does have a pretty big impact overall and you can see here that frames are relatively staying above 60 frames per second. The graphics are set to 1080 and everything is turned down to low. Now, if you are curious, I'll boot up the settings here. And I just want to say, if you're looking at this from a gaming perspective, the biggest bottleneck is going to be that integrated GPU. I mean, at the top of the screen here, you can see that the GPU is sitting at 99% utilized. Uh, this is using every little bit of power it can to power this game right now. 
and you can see that the graphics have been turned down significantly. The rendering scale is still sitting at 100 though. And for some comparison here, this is the Alienware X14 with the RTX 3060, the discrete GPU. I forgot to enable the frame counter on the top left, but it's running at about 190 frames per second. It's bouncing between 170 and 195, give or take. So you can see the power of a discrete GPU. But heading back to the IT15, and here is Street Fighter 6 up and running, and I'm having no issues maintaining a relatively stable 60 frames per second. The GPU is sitting at about 78, 79-ish percent usage and graphics are turned down low. Not the lowest they can go, but they are turned down pretty low. And here is Fatal Fury City of the Wolves up and running, and I'm having no issues keeping this game at a stable 60 frames per second. And this one is looking pretty good. And in terms of emulation, I was very impressed with the IT15. Here is Wii U emulation with CMU running a very interesting game called Breathing in the Wilderness. And taking a look here, I have no issue keeping this game at around 60 frames per second, thanks to FPS++. To be honest with you, though, running this well at this price point is kind of expected. I mean, if it was running less than 60 frames per second constantly here, I would have been very disappointed in this CPU. So with all of that being said, let's take a look at the price. Right now on Amazon.com in the US, the Geekom IT15 is priced at $949.05, or basically 950 bucks. The regular list price of this on Amazon is 1200 bucks, or 1199 if you wanted to be specific. Now, looking at a mini PC, you might think that's expensive, and you might be right, but I would say here one of the big parts about this price is that CPU, the Intel Ultra 9 285H. It's no slouch. It's a very powerful Intel CPU. I mean, for comparison here, and I tried to find something relatively close, here is an ASUS VivoBook S16. It's got the exact same CPU in here. It's got integrated graphics, so it's basically the exact same performance, although cooling may vary. RAM on this is 32 gigs. Storage is half the amount that's on the Geekom IT15. And the price here is 1350 bucks. And I guess in that same vein here, this really isn't a fair comparison, but taking a look at laptops with a discrete GPU, so not integrated graphics. If you were looking at something with that same CPU, but maybe something like an RTX 5070 Ti to power gaming, uh, well, prices absolutely skyrocket. I mean, look at here for 2800 bucks. So let's get into my likes, my dislikes, and whether or not I'd recommend the Geekom IT15 Mini PC. And we'll start out here with my likes. First and foremost, I like the case. It seems to be well built. It's built out of metal, and it seems to be very solid. I like the CPU that's in there. Some people really don't like Intel. But this i9-285H I think does a really good job with integrated graphics and processing power. I like that it's got 32 gigs of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage. I think that's a very healthy number for RAM and storage, especially if you're running Windows. Um, overall, I had no issues whatsoever with the power from those USB ports. I like the fact that connections were stable and everything ran smoothly unlike my laptop where I run into issues with power delivery from those ports. Um, overall here, I was very impressed with this chipset. On top of that, in terms of overall modability, it was very easy to open this up and maybe change out the RAM if you wanted to or the storage drive. If you're looking at stuff like upgrading the CPU, that's going to be next to impossible and I wouldn't recommend doing that. Uh, but just basic stuff like storage drives and RAM is very easy. Now moving on to my dislikes, and I do have a few of them. First and foremost, the case is a fingerprint magnet, which, uh, well, normally you don't touch the cases on these very often. Sometimes you put them behind a monitor so you don't see them or under a desk or something like that. But at the same time here, mine has a bunch of fingerprints on it because I do touch my computer case a lot when I'm plugging something in and I hold on to it. And mine is a fingerprint mess. Secondly here, it's a minor annoyance, but I don't like the fan noise on this. The fan is audible. Um, I mean, the fan's not high pitched like my laptop is, but at the same time here, the fan is a constant whooshing because I constantly push this device. I mean, yes, the case is well ventilated and it seems to be running at a fairly decent temperature. These temperatures are live at the time of recording, but even at these temperatures here, I can still hear the frickin' fan. 
and that's driving me nuts. So I'm probably going to relocate this so I don't really hear the fan as much. However, on a side note here, and this is worth pointing out, I can tweak fan curves to see how this can run. I can run Linux on it so it's a little bit less demanding and maybe even tweak things more there. Or go to the maximum processor state and turn this down to 99. I'll lose some performance, but will quiet the system down a little bit. And the last thing I dislike here is more of a matter of personal preference, but on the front of the case, I kind of wish there was a USB-C port as well, just to make plugging things in just a little bit easier. Uh, there are two on the back, which is great, but at the same time, I do have to use a USB hub now because I have a lot of devices I normally plug into these things. So now comes the big recommendation. Would I recommend the IT15? And the answer here is yes and no. Yes, if you are looking for the best in terms of CPU availability from Intel in a mini PC. I don't think there's anything on the market right now that's directly competing against the Geekcom IT15. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I mean, from a workhorse point of view, and they even highlight it here, video editing, programming, and office, I would say that the IT15 performs extremely well. It beat my Alienware X14, which even had the added benefit of that discrete GPU. In terms of gaming, no, this is not the most powerful device out there. It's one of the best integrated GPUs from Intel. But at the same time here, uh, if you are looking for gaming specific performance, AMD is usually the way to go or looking at something with a discrete GPU, a dedicated graphics card as opposed to integrated graphics. So it kind of depends on your use case here. If you're looking for like an all rounder, a jack of all trades, the IT15 may fit that bill. It's not cheap, but I think it's at a very good price to performance ratio. I think it's in a nice pocket. I mean, for video creating and editing, I like the IT15 here over my Alienware X14. I would take the IT15 night and day. And list price for the IT15 is well below the Alienware X14. I mean, the X14 is great for gaming, but for everything else, for content creation and all of that, I mean, I've had issues with power stability delivered from these USB ports to my USB devices. For example, my microphone, camera, and mouse, and keyboard. Whereas the IT15, it's been rock solid. It's been incredibly stable. And I would pick, pick the IT15 all day, every day over the X14 if I was just video editing. However, for a gaming first focus, I would say the value may be in something like a Steam Deck instead. I mean, the Steam Deck performs very good. I think it's a fantastic, probably one of the best price to performance ratios out there. Uh, but this thing blows the Steam Deck out of the water. The IT15 blows the Steam Deck out of the water if you're looking at it from a PC perspective. Even a docked Steam Deck, I don't think, can compete with the IT15 from a PC perspective. Gaming perspective, different story altogether. But if you're looking at video editing, content creating, using this as an everyday PC, the IT15 is a freaking powerhouse. In my opinion here, if you're interested in Intel, I would say the Geekcom IT12 is in a very good position. 475 bucks USD for a very capable and well-rounded PC. But again, if you're looking for the best of the best here from Geekcom, the IT15 may be up your alley. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Geekcom for providing the IT15 for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about the IT15 in the comments below. And if you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.